also depend on the light that you're in. If you need more light, if you're in a dark scene, you're going to want to open up that aperture in most cases, and you'll have to adjust the ISO depending on how much light you have. So it's a play between the ISO and the aperture to get the proper exposure for the scene that you're in. And when you're in MP4, there's standard IPB and then there's a light version which I'm generally never going to shoot the light version. Maybe because MP4 is more web friendly, you can take it to your phone really fast, get it online. Maybe if you were shooting just to put it on social media, then that might be a chance to use that light MP4 IPB compression. In the MOV setting, they're both full HD. The digital zoom I'm going to have disabled, but you can easily switch into this on the touch screen and I've used it at three times, which you can see here, and maybe even to six times with good results. So that's a handy option to have. You can also set it up in one of these custom profiles on the dial. You can set up the camera any way you want. If you have the need to quickly go between different setups on your ADD, having the two custom options on the dial to quickly switch into is a nice option. And then of course, setting up the audio, the sound recording option, I'm gonna work most of the time in manual, as I'm gonna record my audio either off camera the way I'm doing it now into a recorder, or I'm going to be recording my wireless mic into the camera, allowing me to dial down the preamp and leave it there. We don't want the camera to adjust that. So auto will give you noise because it'll adjust when you're not talking, looking for a signal and it'll raise the noise floor. If you are in a fast moving environment again, or you're outside and people are being in front of the camera and away from the camera and their audio is constantly changing and you don't know what kind of audio you're going to get, then an auto option might work for you in that setup. It's about the only time I'm going to use auto. And with a good microphone, you won't have to run the preamp too hot. On the ADD, I'm finding that setting it at about 25%. The first quarter mark on the record level setting, I can still get clean audio from the camera in manual mode. The grid display is something that you can have on your LCD screen if you want help with composition or leveling. There's also a digital level, but in general, I leave that off. The button function, if you go into that, there is actually a nice option to be able to use the shutter release to start and stop the video because I have noticed that I've missed or not been able to trigger the record exactly when I want to with the start and stop button that is the default one. It's a little spongy and it can be hard to get it to start and stop. So if you want, you can make the shutter button your start and stop as well as the button on the back. Down to time-lapse movie mode, that's disabled by default, but it's really nice that you can jump into that and shoot a time-lapse without extra gear if you want. And you could again put that on a custom function if you wanted to get one really quick. We go over to the play menu. There's not much in here, but on the third screen, the first one, highlight alert, I definitely enable that. That's really nice, even though you don't get to see it, except when you're in the review of your playback on your camera, but it will help you see what is overexposed in your image. If you take a test video and then play it back, it'll blink, so I definitely have that enabled. The AF point display, I like to enable on my 60D because I could take that snapshot and it shows me where it was focusing. Again, since they don't have that in the ADD that I can find, it's not as helpful, but you can enable it if you want. The histogram display, I set that to RGB because I prefer it, but you can go with brightness or RGB depending on how you like to view the histogram. And control over HDMI, I'm gonna leave disabled unless I'm actually hooking up a monitor and I need that control. Going over to the setup menu, the format card option is there. Use that if you keep seeing your camera auto stopping. Obviously save all your footage first, then you can reformat your card in the camera and that can help with the problem where the camera is stopping before it should be, which on the ADD is about 30 minutes. You should get that. So if you're having that problem, try formatting the card. The Wi-Fi I'm going to leave off because I don't want to burn up my battery. Turn it on if I'm going to transfer something to my phone. I have the LCD brightness set to the middle. It's nice that you can turn it all the way up and see it in the sun, but you'll want to be careful about judging your exposure with the LCD depending on the brightness of your screen. That's when using histograms is really important because you can see if the image is actually blown out or not. In the viewfinder display, you can choose to display the electronic level, which is only gonna show in the two AF modes for single point and multi, not in face tracking, so you can turn it on or off. And video system, you have NTSC and PAL on this camera, so if you're in the US, just use NTSC. If you're in Europe or another country that has PAL, use PAL. 
it'll just be easier. The feature guide I leave enabled gives you a few brief words about what all the controls actually do. So that can be really helpful when you're learning the camera. Touch control I leave to standard. You can change it for your preference. Sensor cleaning I'm gonna to leave to auto. The info button display options, I'm gonna have them all checked so that I can have all of the information displayed as I toggle through it. That's gonna be the same for the live view info switch setting. And again, I'm gonna have the histogram displayed to RGB. This is actually where it displays when you're seeing it before you hit record. And the other one is what you see when you look at your videos in playback. And something that I found that's really cool, when you go to the review screen, the playback screen, click through the info button, it actually tells you all of the settings that you had when you recorded the video. Sometimes when I do these, I would love to have known what the settings were, I didn't forget or I didn't mention them. It's all there for you to see, so check that out for sure. And in the custom functions one menu under exposure, you will find in the second menu inside that menu, the different ISO speed increments. If you're not seeing all of the ISO options, go into here, it should be set to one third stop, not one stop but that should be on by default. But just in case you're not finding them, set it to one third stop and you'll have all of the ISO options. All right, that's all the menu settings inside the camera. You also have the quick function button, which is gonna give you a lot of access to settings on the touch screen, which is really handy. And when I'm shooting, that's what I'm gonna use, such as turning on the AF servo and white balance and manual audio settings, which you can now adjust while you're recording. You can do that right there on the touch screen. So I absolutely love having access to that on the touch screen. It makes the ADD, a DSLR, more like a traditional ENG camera where you have all of those controls as buttons. The touch screen really almost replaces all of that. It's super simple. You don't have to dive into the actual menus that we just went through. All right, that's all the settings. You're ready to shoot really high quality video with your Canon 80D, you do need to know that you're in manual mode, so you can't just set up these settings and the camera's gonna do it all for you. The 80D does have good auto modes, so you could switch into something like TV, which is shutter priority, set your shutter at 1 50th of a second, and let the camera do everything else. And if you were in a vlogging setup, it would work really well. Or if you're just struggling to learn your camera and all these manual settings are too much in the beginning, you will still get really nice video out of this camera in auto modes. Otherwise, you're in manual, you have full control, you're gonna get the best image when you know how to work with it. Really work on that exposure triangle, getting your exposure and your white balance and those things set up 